from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome to the Boston area studio. Happy to welcome back two of our Cube alumni, both from Activio, Brian Regan, the CMO of the company, and Ashok Rama, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Cloud. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Happy New Year, Stu, great to be here. Yeah, 2020, uh, as we, we were talking about, uh, we don't all have flying cars and some of these <laughs> things, but uh, there, there are a lot of exciting things and ever-changing in the tech world. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about 10C, uh, which of course mm -hmm. is Actifio's announcement. Uh, if I heard the C, it's, a, it's about cloud, it's about containers, and it's about copy data management, which of course, you know, we know Actifio as always. quite well. So Brian, let, let's start with a company update first. Uh, of course, you know, copy data management is where uh, Actifio really created a category, but all of these new waves of technology that Actifio is fitting into. Well, 2019 um, was an incredible year for us. Um, you know, continued uh, accelerating our growth uh, in the market, in the enterprise particularly. Um, you know, the, the secular trends around um, hybrid and multi-cloud really played well to our existing strengths, and 10C really builds on those strengths. We'll talk more about that, I, I know, in a moment. Um, we also saw continued, um, you know, as digital transformation, as as application modernization initiatives took hold in just about every enterprise, our database capabilities really played uh, again um, as a, a strength that we could capitalize on to land um, significant enterprise accounts, um, get started with them, and then really start to expand the overall data platform, data management platform uh, in those accounts. Yeah. So, Ashok, before we get into the the, the ten C stuff specifically, let Brian Brian teed up some of those cloud trends and how I think about data protection, data management absolutely has changed. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I remember a couple of years ago we, we said, oh, well, you know, people are adopting all these clouds. All of these concerns still exist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it doesn't go away. It's not magically, oh, I did Office 365, I don't need to think about all the things that uh -huh. I thought about uh -huh. uh, with Outlook. When I do public <laughs> cloud and build new applications, <laughs> oh wait, you know, somebody needs to take care of that absolutely. data. So bring us inside your, your customers, the, the, the team that's building these products and uh, some of those big trends. Sure thing, happy new year still. Um, Thank you. So, and happy to be back on theCUBE. So, um, 2019 really defined the era where a lot of our enterprises really started moving production workloads to the cloud. Um, Multi-cloud become a reality for Actifio. You know, we, are, we were running production workloads on seven cloud platforms. Um, and so, the, the, the key elements of being infrastructure agnostic, wherein Actifio can do everything in all cloud platforms. We are basically infrastructure neutral was a key element. And the other element was a single pane of glass. You could have an Oracle workload running on-prem with a WebLogic application running on Azure and not know the difference. Uh, so we, the, the seamless mobility of data uh, was the key element that a lot of our enterprises you know, took advantage of from an Actifio standpoint. Uh, and a lot of the 10C capabilities adds on to those capabilities. And we see more of these adoptions happening in 2020. So I think 10C teases up absolutely perfectly for that market. Yeah, uh, Brian, let, let's talk a little bit about Actifio's place in the market, the mm -hmm. differentiation there. That direct connection with the application and the partners uh, is a real big piece of it. It's a huge piece and something we really uh, not just double, tripled down on in 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly, um, for us, our database capabilities, which we believe are really second to none in the industry, um, we continue to expand and enrich the capabilities, including SAP HANA, obviously already Oracle and SQL Server, DB2, as well as the Linux-based databases, the new and NoSQL databases. Um, we also understood, and as our customers were, were talking to us about their application modernization, they were moving more of their front-end capabilities to containers and they wanted the, the data to come with it, um, at least temporarily. Uh, and so that was a big focus for us as well, was making sure that we could bring the data, whether it was into a VM, into a container, into a physical server, into any number of clouds, in order to support that application at that time was a critical part of our uh, differentiation for 2019. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love just a little more on the database piece yeah. because you go to Amazon reInvent and you know the migrations <coughs> of databases to the cloud, of mm -hmm. course, is a major conversation. Yep. You look at Amazon, they have a whole number of their offerings as well as if you want to use any database out there, mm -hmm. they'll let yep. you use it. Of course, Oracle might charge you more if you're doing it on the <laughs> right. Amazon. The Amazon partner, the 
Azure partnership with Oracle was some mm -hmm. big news in the Absolutely. second half mm -hmm. uh, of 2019. So when you're working with their customers, you know, database is still central to uh, you know how they run their business, and one of the bigger expenses mm -hmm. uh, on the books there. So you know, what what as we look at 2020, you know, what is the landscape specifically from a database standpoint? Mm -hmm. Well, we we continue to see in in most of our large enterprise accounts that Oracle and SQL Server continue to dominate the majority of the payload of, of databases. We don't see that changing, although we do see net new applications being built on new database platforms. Um, to complement the, the Oracle and SQL Server backends. So we are seeing a rise of the Mongos and the, the new and NoSQLs uh, out there. Um, we're also seeing more consideration of building in the cloud as opposed to starting on-prem and then potentially leveraging the cloud sort of post facto in, in terms of the application architecture. So our ability to support both the, um, the, the legacy big iron database platforms as well as the new generation platforms, regardless of application architecture, regardless of the geometry of the application, um, is a big part of our differentiation going forward. All right, so let, let's, we've, we've hinted about it, but 10C, major announcement. Uh, yep. let, let, let's get into uh, how that extends what we've been talking about. Absolutely, um, so you know, we've made a lot of the new databases, particularly uh, the NoSQL databases, the Mongos and HANA's first class citizens uh, in, in 10C, which means we understand not just the database, the also, the also the ecosystem that the database lives in. Uh, we all know HANA is a fairly big uh, database in terms of the number of machines it consumes, number of you know uh, applications that reuse it, and to to capture and and actually provide value for HANA, you need to understand where the HANA database lives, and so some of the capabilities we've added in 10C is to kind of figure out this ecosystem, and when you migrate, you migrate the ecosystem, not just the HANA database. Uh, because you know that is that is a key element, uh, and the second aspect is the containers that that Brian touched on. Now we're seeing legacy data being presented into containers, and there's a bridge required for that. Now, how do you present that bridge? Containers can be brought up, but they're lifeless unless you give them data. So we act as a bridge wherein you bring up the container using Kubernetes or whatever framework you have, and we marry the data into the container framework. So. Most organizations, you know, as they evolve from yesterday's architecture to today's architecture, they need this bridge which helps them navigate that, that migration process. And, and Actifio, being the data normalization platform, is helping them live on both segments. Right? Nobody does a turn the switch off on the old one and move to the new. They, they coexist. So that is the key element there. Yeah. Um, we, we spent a lot of time over the last couple of years hearing about cloud native architectures <laughs> and that discussion of data um, is it, kind of something you need to kind of dig into understand. We, I, I'm glad to hear you talking about, you know, when you talk about storage and containerization, uh, you know, where that fits today because, you know, originally it was only stateless, but now we know we can do stateful environments here. Um, but while uh, containerization is, uh, you know, growing at huge leaps and bounds, uh, you know, customers aren't taking their Oracle database and shoving it's it into container. Uh, you know, Brian, a lot of discussion about the partnerships. I, I think it was, what's it, seven you know, major cloud providers mm -hmm. uh, yes. th that, that Actifio is there. Talk a little bit about the, the cloud native, the relationships mm -hmm. with some of those partners. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I mean, we, um, we made great strides from a go-to-market standpoint with our cloud partners this past year. Google Cloud is uh, probably our most significant go-to-market partner Absolutely. from a cloud standpoint. We've did, done a lot of joint engineering work. Yes. Um, in order to support um, both our um, existing uh, uh, software platform as well as our SaaS control plane um, in the Google Cloud. Um, we have um, landed many significant um, deals with, uh, with, Google. with Google this past year. Um, and they, they have been, you know, as they continue to really um, uh, increase their focus on enterprise accounts and both hybrid as well as um, public cloud uh, sort of architectures, um, we are hand in glove with them as their uh, backup and DR partner for those cloud workloads. Great, uh, so we talked uh, quite a bit about the database piece, but in general, uh, back into the cloud, archive in the cloud, mm -hmm. what, what, what does 10C uh, specifically and Actifio in general uh, enhance in those environments? So uh, 10C bring in, brings in you know, the key elements is recovery orchestration. So if I have to bring up, let's say 500 machines in any cloud platform, how do I do it? Well, I can go and bring up one machine at a time and take two days to bring it up, or with Actifio's resiliency director, 
you can create a recovery plan and a push button recovery happens. So we've seen a lot of customers adopt that, uh, particularly customers that want to leverage the Google platform for its infrastructure capabilities once an orchestration that, is, that, is, that understands the applications that are coming up. So there is a significant benefit from a DR standpoint to the recovery orchestration. So we invested a lot of time in tuning the performance and understanding Google and Amazon and Azure to make sure this was built right. Uh, the other big push we're seeing for the cloud platforms is SAP. SAP as an enterprise has taken a mission to say there's no more data centers. Everything is going to the cloud. So, and SAP workloads are not the easiest workloads to manage, and so the, 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 the intersection point of SAP and the cloud is where Actifio becomes really valuable. Uh, because though these data sets by definition are large, they're complex, and they're geo-distributed. And the DR is of paramount importance because these are crown jewels. So, so those segments of DR orchestration followed with you know, SAP and, and HANA, which is again our strength with databases, is kind of where uh, 10C really hits, hits, the, hits the home run. Yeah, uh, when, when we're talking to users and the discussion of multi-cloud in general, one of the challenges is you need different skill sets across Absolutely. them. Uh, one of those powerful things I've heard from uh, Actifio is really is a normalization yes. across any cloud or even in a cloud. Oh wait, I was going to stuck six stuff again in, in an archive. That means I'm never going to touch it again. Mm -hmm. uh, ingress and egress fees. You know, I have to figure these out, or I need to dedicate an engineer mm -hmm. to those kind of environments. Uh, so it, it seems that just fundamentally, the architecture uh, that you've built at Actifio is to help customers really get their arms around those multi-cloud environments. Absolutely, and I think there there are two additional components that um, really uh, one of which has lived with Actifio from the very beginning of the company, which was API first. Mm -hmm. um, the cloud is very much an API-centric uh, type of operating model, um, and with Actifio, we don't change the management system or operating model, but in fact, we incorporate in, um, so all of this orchestration that Ashok talked about can be actuated via API. Um, yes. the, the second piece, which we really started in 2017 with our 8.0 platform release, is the, the consumption and the intelligent consumption of object. Um, with 10C, we've continued to advance exactly. our object uh, capabilities. In fact, we published a paper uh, with ESG um, in late 2019 mm -hmm. that talked about mounting 50 terabyte Oracle databases directly out of object with actually increased performance versus the production block storage behind it. So um, we have really, uh, with 10C, actually added caching Absolutely. to even further Wonderful. performance optimize um, object workloads which speaks to both the flexibility, um, but also the economic flexibility of being able to contemplate running workloads in the cloud out of object at a lower cost platform without necessarily the compromise of performance that you would normally expect. Absolutely, and, and like you said, uh, the skill set required, do I need to put it in object, do I need to put it in block, we kind of eliminate that, right? We, we neutralize that to say, you want to leverage the cloud, give us your cost point and you can dial the cost up or down depending on what you see for performance and we will move the data back and forth. So that flexibility is, is enormous for customers. Well, th that's great. Uh, if you've talked to anybody that's been in the storage industry for a while and you want to make them squirm, say the word migration. <laughs> uh, so we know how painful it has been. If you go talk to any of the traditional vendors, they have so many tools and so many services to help do that. Um, in a cloud era, it should be a little bit easier, but it, it, it sounds like that's a, another key piece of 10C. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, 10C, you know, hits the home, I think, with the with the API integration. So the other element uh, 2019 saw was the scale of deployment of Actifio. Uh, you know, when you have to manage hundreds of thousands of machines across different geos, there is a scale that comes to the data protection that, you know, people really, you have to see it to actually build for it and, and work with it. And we saw it in 2019, and 10C incorporates a lot of that capabilities as well, making it as cloud native as possible. Uh, to basically run these applications globally. All right, uh, was wondering if uh, you might have a customer example to really highlight uh, the, the the impact that 10C is having. Understand if you can't name them uh, specifically, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, actually, uh, Shook has already talked about one um, one customer slash partner um, who is uh, the I think still the world's largest software company yes. uh, in the world, um, based out of Germany. Um, 
And uh, they are powering their enterprise cloud um, and the data management and data protection um, beneath that enterprise cloud across four different hyperscalers um, using Actifio. Uh, and I think they're on record um, in a webinar earlier in December talking about um, their evaluation of pretty much every technology out there um, and the one that could really deliver on performance at scale across clouds was Actifio. Yeah, and the key element was they wanted a single platform with a single pane of glass across all, all cloud platforms, and, and Actifio was the solution that they chose. So, um, and, and certainly, I think we credit um, them and our, our, the rest of our enterprise customers for pushing us absolutely. to make 10C more powerful and more uh, capable across any cloud. Um, they, you know, ultimately, an enter enterprise is going to make a decision. That they've probably already made the decision to incorporate cloud into their enterprise architecture. Um, what we give them is the freedom and the flexibility to choose any cloud. And by the way, any cloud today that might change tomorrow and having the ability to uh, seamlessly migrate and or convert from uh, cloud A to cloud B is something that Actifio powers as well. Yeah, uh, just uh, make sure we, we're, we're clear as to what's happening there. It's great that you've got flexibility there. When we're talking about data and data gravity, of course, we're not talking about just lifting an entire database <laughs> no. and uh, you know ignoring the laws of physics uh, there, but it's the flexibility of using uh, all these various th things. Uh, and any, you, we talk about you know SAP, of course, needs to live across uh, mm -hmm. all these clouds. But when you talk about an enterprise, you know what is kind of that that killer use case because. Mm -hmm. We said we're, mm -hmm. we're not at a point where cloud is not a utility. I don't right. wake up in the morning right. and look at the sheet and say, oh, I'm going right. to you know, use you know, cloud A versus cloud right. B. Uh, so so you know, what is you know, the, the importance of, of, of that flexibility? I mean, for us today, the, the majority of our business starts with a company saying, I need to deliver my data faster to my developers or my testers or even increasingly my data scientists and analysts. Um, and my data sets have become so large that it's becoming increasingly difficult for me to do that with regularity. So the currency of the data is starting to suffer. Um, that is the first use case for us. And that, that powering that enterprise transformational initiative around a new application or an uh, updated application based on a historical app um, using those enterprise databases. Um, delivering that seamlessly, quickly, regardless of how big the data is, still remains our first use case. And then increasingly, those customers are realizing that they can start to achieve the other benefits of Actifio, um, including I can start to back that up to the cloud. I can actually orchestrate recoveries in the cloud, not just uh, bulk sort of transfer, but actually um, the entire application stack and bring that up in the cloud. Um, I can start to um, take those, uh, those data sets and actually um, mount them into containers for my next generation mm -hmm. application. So mm -hmm. that starting point of give me my data as quickly as possible regardless of how big it is, starts to become universal in terms of its applicability for all use cases. Yeah, I guess Ashok, the last thing uh, I, I want to understand from you is in 2019 we saw a lot of the large providers putting out their vision for how I manage in this multi-cloud environment. Uh -huh. uh, you were at the Google Cloud event yes. where Anthos was unveiled. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at Microsoft Ignite when Azure Arc was unveiled. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, VMware has things like Tanzu out there. Mm -hmm. So it, this multi-cloud environment, how do I manage across these dispersed environments? Uh, what, what, what do all of those moves mean to Actifio and, and how you look at things? And I think you know, the, the, with the Tensi release and with the core architecture that Actifio had in place, uh, which was multi-cloud ready and API ready. So those are the two elements that are kind of building blocks that you can tie into any one of those constructs you talked about. Uh, right, so we've had, we have customers innovated us with Anthos, we have customers innovated us with ServiceNow, mm -hmm. we have customers doing VRO with us, right? So there are many, many integration platforms. The latest I saw was an Alexa app, where <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were mounting an Oracle database on a voice command. So, so, you know, there's endless possibilities as these ecosystems evolve, uh, because Actifio stays behind the covers, powering the data, delivering the data wherever it's needed on the target. So that is the key element and enabler that we see uh, that, that helps all these other platforms become super successful. Yeah. So Brian, it sounds very much a tailwind, uh, the, the big trends that we're seeing Absolutely. here, uh, key partnerships and uh, you know, meeting your customers where they need to be. Absolutely, yeah. Right. We continue to uh, you know, play in the enterprise market where these 
Uh, these are absolutely top of mind of every CIO and top of their agenda, um, and we are you know, working hand in glove with them absolutely. to make sure that our platform not only uh, anticipates their needs, but delivers on their, their current state of, uh, of needs as well. Right. Brian Ashok, thank you so much. Congratulations on the 10C launch, cloud containers, copy data management. Look forward to watching your customers and your continued growth. Thanks as always, Thank you Stu. very much. All right, I'm Stu Miniman. Lots more coverage here in 2020. Check out thecube.net for all of it, and thank you for watching theCUBE.